Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thanks for tuning into this one. And in this video, I would want to talk about four main pillars of uh, competences. And I think, you know, we've talked about competences a lot. We understand what they are at this point, I want to believe. And if you're going for an interview, I think it is so important, very, very important that you understand what I will be discussing here. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for uh, tuning into this video again. It, you know, it goes a long way when you guys are able to come back to learn and gain something from these videos. And I hope that it helps you and you're able to apply all the things we talk about, you know. But remember, I'm just here to bring the information to you and what you do with it is really up to you, right? And that is where the homework really falls on you, which is you sitting down to truly understand and digest this information. If you can spend the time to digest it and practice it, and practice it and practice it again, you will get a lot of good results. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, without further ado, please don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe, all that good stuff. All right. Um, let's see. All right. What we have here, I like diagrams. It makes it easy to understand. I can explain it better. And colors are beautiful too. So let's start with the first thing here. The first main thing that we would need to understand, all right, the competencies. We have various industries, all right, jobs and all that all over, right? And every job often require certain competences. As a pilot, you do require to know the pilot competences. And if you Google them, you will see a lot of them actually, all right? But there are set competences that are, that is almost industry standard. And there are about nine of them. Sometimes you may see eight, sometimes you may see, you know, nine. The point here is that those competences are generally what airlines are testing their applicants or candidates for. And your ability to demonstrate those competences, demonstrate those competences, okay, is really where you are able to show that you have uh, what is required. Now, we are not going to talk about how you prepare for an air, the, the aptitude test here. And even though that is important, we're not going to talk about how you uh pass your math or pass the numeracy and all those stuff. Those things are important because those things are also testing for competences. Okay. But when it go, when you get to the stage of an interview, the list of competences somehow change or at least they are at a different level. So the first thing is when you have that competency, when you know them, okay, we can talk about situation awareness. We can talk about leadership and teamwork. We can talk about knowledge and application of procedure. We can talk about your communication. We can talk about, you know, things like flexibility, adapt adaptability, all those things are competences, okay? And your goal is to truly understand those competences. Another one is workload management, things like that. Now, the first thing I always tell everyone is this. When you're building a house, you start with a foundation, okay? And that is where the knowledge comes into play. When you understand the competency really well, and I'm talking about, you read about it. So for example, if you're thinking of situational awareness, what does it mean? All right. I'm talking about the, the knowledge aspect of it. What does it really mean? Yes, we can talk about uh, breaking it down to simple things of, you know, what has happened, what is happening, what will happen, right? Mindset. That is the basic thing. But if you read about it, you in the pilot sp space or in aviation space, you get to understand it even more. That in as much as we're talking about maintaining awareness of what is going on with you as a pilot, we're also talking about things that applies to the airplane. We're also talking about things that applies to the environment. We're also talking about things that is happening to maybe your team members, right? Or maybe your passengers, or maybe it's outside factors. The point here is your situational awareness isn't just limited to you, yourself, as the pilot, okay? And this is an example of what I mean. Having that understanding, all right, helps to broaden how you apply the concept of situational awareness. Okay, so it starts with the knowledge, knowing what it means, how you can apply it, where it applies, things like that. The knowledge, okay, once you see the different examples of where the knowledge of situational awareness really comes into play, then we now need to move on to the application of it. And application means that how can you apply it? Now, remember the example I just gave to you about situation awareness on different areas that are applicable, okay? That is the knowledge part of it, understanding where and how I can use it. But 
in the application as aspect of it, we're talking about you applying it to a particular question. So you show up to an interview and they ask you questions in the lines of, oh, you are flying from point A to point B and something has gone wrong. What would you do? Or tell me about the time you faced a situation in which you had to make multiple decisions or you had to go through multiple things or you had to you know, handle multiple things at once. That is somewhat a type of situation that you have to describe. So remember, in these two examples I just gave you, I've mentioned a type of tell me about the time and I've also placed you in a situation where I said you're in a plane or you are going from point A to point B and something has gone wrong. What would you do? The second one is a scenario question. Okay. Your ability to understand those two differences makes a huge difference. All right. Because when I say tell me about a time something happened, right? I'm asking for an experience that you've had. And yes, you need you still need to apply the concept of maybe situation awareness or maybe it's communication, maybe it's workload management, all those things, right? And by the way, the more of these competencies you know, the more you can almost use them in on in a particular question, okay? Which is a good thing to do us also because just because I'm asking a situational question doesn't necessarily mean that the only thing that applies is situational awareness. I hope that makes sense. So the point here is for the Tell me about a time situation question. I'm asking of something that you've experienced that you can share with me. Okay. And hopefully when you are talking about it, you're able to use it and apply it, right? And apply the concepts and the knowledge of situation awareness. And then you are able to maybe tie it to aviation at the end of it. On the other hand, with the what would you do type question, I'm asking you to imagine, imagine, all right? And this is where a lot of people, and I want you to keep this in mind. This is where a lot of people sometimes struggle. Imagine yourself in an airplane going from point A to point B and something has gone wrong at the destination, whether, whatever that may be, all right, shut down, airport shut down, uh, you know, whatever the, the situation might, might be, right? Something, the problem has occurred, what are you going to do? You need to be able to mentally shift into the mindset of, okay, I'm, on, I'm flying right now. What are the things I'm going to consider? And this is where your ability to practice these things, right? To understand, you know, of course, you already have the knowledge, like we already talked about, but then to apply that knowledge, okay, is where the, the this come into play, right? Applying to a what would you do question or a team ad question, okay? And the steps to follow. And that is where structure, okay, comes into play, all right? When you have the knowledge and you have the ability to apply it because you un you understand it and now you understand the question you have been asked what structure are you going to follow so for example if you're asked about a tell me about the time question or describe something you can always use things like star on the other hand if it's a situational question like what would you do where you have to go through a list of things to go through that's how t dota comes into play I hope this is making sense. And that is how you get structure. Now, we have different acronyms that we can talk about when it comes to structure. And trust me, it's not really about the acronym because it doesn't matter. The point here is you want to show that you have an, a way of going through problems one by one and eliminating things and resolving it and then creating options for you. There's a reason why we have two engines, two air, two pilots. There's a reason why we have multiple flight attendants. There's a multiple. There's a reason why an airplane would have three generators, four generators. The point here is there are always backup layers. The same thing is how you want to think with your scenarios, especially with the what would you do type questions. You want to make sure that you think on multiple layers as well in terms of what are your next backups, what are your contingencies. Think about it as contingency plans if something doesn't work out. And this is why you always have to have reasons as you are eliminating your options or at least listing them. You want to have reasons why they are listed or why you need to eliminate them, depending on the situation. All right. The biggest last, and I, this is in gray or the, I said the biggest last, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, the most important part of all of it, okay, even though everything I've said is important, but I think this might have been over, can be overlooked easily. And that is that is adaptability. All right. What does that mean? Think about adaptability being also mean meaning flexibility. Your ability 
to understand the competency and then to be able to use it. And I think I said this earlier, to be able to use it with multiple situations will really help. And um, it comes down to having that knowledge, having the ability to apply various competencies, having that structure, and then having that ability to adapt it to situations that you are given. I really wanted to share this with you guys. I won't make this video too long. I hope that you found value in this one. If you have, please don't forget to drop a like on the video and I'd love to see you in the next one.